Hi, this is Maria with Libwing Audio. Welcome back to the 5-minute video series. As audio engineers, it is important that we review and we understand some of the processes behind the plugins that we use on a daily basis. Today, we're going to be talking about mid-side. Okay, so first, let's talk a little bit about mid-side technique and where does this recording and later mixing technique derives from. It was originally developed by Alan Bloomline, and it is a coincident technique that employs a bi-directional microphone, usually a figure eight polar pattern facing sideways and a cardioid microphone facing the sound source that is to be recorded. Now the left and right channels are produced through a very simple matrix. The left equals mid plus side and the right equals mid minus side. The minus meaning that you add the side signal with the polarity reverse. Now center one goes beyond the typical MS processing. The center one center prominence algorithm analyzes the precise location of the sound sources in the stereo signal for a careful processing of the audio. So now that we know and we understand a little bit better the technique that is applied for MS processing and also how Center One deals with MS processing but a very particular way, I'm going to show you a mix that I'm working here, which is almost done. I'm not going to lie to you, but there is an episode, there is a certain part of this track that is just bugging me because it's that little detail that it's sticking up and I want this to be perfect. So this is a track called Omi by my friend composer Juan Arboleda. It is live strings with oboe and piano. Now the oboe and the piano were overdubbed and the strings were recorded on a big orchestral hall. So the tracks that you see right now are double basses, cellos, violas, violins, two and one, and then we've got the stereo rooms, which are basically microphones placed all over the room, and the solo tracks for the instruments like piano and oboe. Let's listen up and I'm going to point out then this section in particular that I'm concerned about. Now, as you can hear, this is a very busy section of the orchestra and the solo instruments because, well, the piano is running up and down the scale, the oboe is opening is also running up and down the scale, and then the orchestra is playing all sorts of different melodies. But there's this one melody in particular done by the cellos and the double basses, which goes doom 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 doom, and it feels like it's sticking out. Let's hear it one more time. And you can hear it's also like doubled by the piano, but in this case, I want a little bit less of the orchestra and a little bit more of the, those accents in the piano because this is like the piano moment. So center one is going to be great. Why? Because, well, first of all, from the recording of the session, which is the information that I received from my friend, I know that the double basses and the cellos were center right, were seating right at the center of the sound stage, meaning that there, this little guy in here, this slider is going to take good care of that. Now remember with center one, the center slider is locked in to the center band, pi band pass EQ, which means that it's going to act as a specific EQ filter that is going to help me to cut out or boost if I wanted, but in this case, cut out those troubling frequencies in that range in particular. But in this next example, I'm going to mute the left and right of the orchestra and we're going to play just the center and the piano and the oboe.
Now let's hear the inverse. Now you hear how obviously there is a bleed because again, remember, this is like a live orchestra. So there's going to be sound all over the place. There is an evident bleed of the double basses and the cellos in on the left and right channel, but definitely the place where I'm most concerned about is the center channel. So let's go ahead. I'm going to loop in just a section and work around that area of the orchestra. Did you hear, guys? This is exactly what I was talking about. I was able to tackle this problem right there, exactly what I needed. Now, I also played with a new fader, a new slider that I didn't mention earlier at the beginning, which is the center channel width. This slider basically takes off a little bit of the weight from the center channel and it brings down its prominence so the piano and the elbow can come up just exactly as I need them. Again, I could have EQ'd this, but then EQ would have, would have affected the entire stereo stage as opposed to just dialing and tackling exactly the issue that I was having right here. Well guys, thank you for watching and I hope you are enjoying our videos. Visit LeapWingAudio.com and download the trials for Stage 1 and Center 1 to review the concepts for Midside. And also leave us your comments on our Facebook page, our Instagram, or our YouTube. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.